Okay, hi year nine. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own synthetic cubism portrait. Now, we talked a little bit last week about synthetic cubism, the characteristics of it. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to sort of replicate, replicate those characteristics in Photoshop using a supplied image. So down here you can see the supplied image that I've given you guys. Um, I've manipulated it in a number of ways, like down here it looks like a kaleidoscope. This is sort of a scattered grid, um, kind of like that trace loop image that we looked at. Um, this one is like it's flipped and it's expanding. But what we're going to do today um, is focus on this first step down here, which is expanding the image. So you can sort of see how it's sort of becoming flattened out. It's looking elongated. It's looking flat, but it's still all the one perspective. And I've chosen this image for you guys to look at because the composition is really nice um, and the patterning on the shirt is really, really visually interesting. So that's why I've chosen that. So in starting our portrait, we want to open Photoshop, which I've already done. We want to go to create new. And in this uh, new document, we're going to change the preset details. And I've written these out on the instructions, but we want to change our name to synthetic. Oop, I can't type. Cubism portrait. We want our width and our height to be the same because we want a square, okay? So we're going to go 3000 by 3000 and that's in pixels. If I were to change this to centimeters, sorry, centimeters, that's not right. That's not right at all. Oh, sorry, hang on. And our DPI is 300. If I were to change this to centimeters, that's 25.4 centimeters high and wide. Okay, so it's a, roughly about the size of a ruler um, as a square. So that's sort of the, the space, if I can, if you can imagine that physically, um, on a piece of paper, it's about that size. Okay, so bigger than an A4 piece of paper, but smaller than A3, about a ruler long and a ruler wide, almost. Uh, like I said, our resolution is 300 um, DPI pixels per inch. We're going to leave this RGB color. Okay, I'm going to change this to 32 bit, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to be working with um, black and white images because you guys have been working with black and white images all year long. Okay, and we're just going to keep that theme going. So the next part is background contents. We want it to be white um, just so it's nice and clean and um, really easy, just like a normal canvas. Okay. And I'm just going to check this back to pixels and those are the presets that we want. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click create and here is our canvas. So first thing we want to do is go up to this view button. Okay. And we want to scroll down to new guide layout. So you can see there's some information in here already. We want to uncheck the rows box right here and check the columns box in here. I'm going to change this number to 16. Okay. And 16 is really important. If it's not 16, um, it puts everything out of, it, it puts everything in whack. So, 16, we don't want any information in these boxes down here. I'm just going to leave everything blank, but 16. Okay. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see that's given us these really nice blue, evenly distributed guidelines. That's going to be really, really important for when we start cutting up our image and resizing it and cropping it and manipulating it. So. 
Next thing we want to do is go back up to File, Open New, and using that same preset, so we're going to change the title and we're going to change it to Reference. Oh, can't type again. Reference image. Okay. Double checking that the width is 3000 pixels, the height is 3000 pixels, the resolution is 300 pixels per inches or DPI. Uh, the RGB color is going to be the same, but it doesn't really matter. And then the background content, we want to be white. Okay. Go ahead and create. So then we're going to do the same thing with the guidelines again. Back up to view, new guide layout. Instead of 16, we're going to go 8. And that's super important because 8 goes into 16 two times, which means the width of these columns here are two of these columns here, right? That's, that's math. So when we cut and copy into this one and we double them up, they're going to be evenly distributed and there's going to be enough for every column that's here, right? So what we want to do now is um, go to the desktop, get our supplied image. I'm using a different one today. I'm going to drag and drop that in. Okay. I'm going to drag and drop it because we want to be able to manipulate this image rather than and, and open it as a layer rather than um, on the background as you would if you were to open it through Photoshop rather than dragging and dropping. So I'm going to expand this image to fit the canvas and then because that's a transform tool we're going to always click the little tick here Okay, you can press enter, but that just commits to transform. I like to personally click the tick every time because it's just a physical, like, um, I don't know, I just, I just have to do it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so we've got our image and we've got our plain canvas. We've got guidelines on both of them, um, eight guidelines on this one, 16 on this one, or 16 columns and eight columns on this one. So from here, we're gonna use the marquee, the rectangular marquee tool. The keyboard uh, shortcut for this, if you're really interested in all the shortcuts, is M, okay? And I, I just like to click it um, because I just like to, and I'm gonna go, I sort of start in this top area just here because when we click and drag to select, it sort of snaps to those guidelines, okay? If it's not snapping to those guidelines, you need to check your snap settings under view, make sure it's got the tick next to it, and then snap to guides is ticked, okay? So now that I've selected this, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut Control C, and then I'm going to go over to this canvas here and Control V to paste. Okay, then I'm just going to click the Move tool over here, which is keyboard shortcut V, um, if you're interested. And I'm just going to click and move um, so that it's in this area at the end at the far left of the image, of the canvas, sorry. So it's in the same spot on both canvases. From here, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control T to transform. If you haven't guessed already, I'm using a Windows um, 10 computer, not Mac, so if you're using a Mac, um, it's Command instead of Control. So. I'm going to click on this button here and just transform, just slide it across so that it fits onto these guidelines and takes up this column, okay? Doesn't matter that it's shrunk a little bit, that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to go back up here and click the tick. I'm going to come back and click 
on our bar that we've just added and I'm going to control C, control V again to double it up. Okay. And you can see every time that I control C, control V, I copy and paste, it adds a new layer. Okay. And that's going to be super important for when we want to start playing with this. Okay. So I'm just going to keep doing this, click, drag, control C, control V, move. I bring it to the next set of columns where it's meant to be. Then I go control T, drag it in, click the tick. While you're going along, I like to do it at the end because I can turn the um, guidelines off, but you can adjust these to perfectly fit and align with the rest of them, okay? And to zoom in and out, I'm just using control plus and control minus. So, control C, control V again, move, align, perfect. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. I might speed up the video. Okay, so I've just copied in all of those little sections in here, all these columns. I've doubled them up, put them next to each other, and now you can see that we've really got that expanded, flattened sort of image, okay? So what I'm going to do here now is go back up to view, go to clear canvas guides. And I've actually done this one pretty well. Um, so what you might notice is that sometimes you'll end up with little gaps like this, or they might be a little higher, a little too low, maybe. Um, what I like to do is when I take those canvas guides off, is I use my keypad and I use the left and right keys and the up and down keys to nudge those nudge each layer, each bar, sorry, each column, um, to where I need it to go. But I've done pretty well on this one. I don't need to fix anything. Okay. And after I've fixed that or, or you know, done what, fixed what needs to be fixed, I'm going to go new guide layout. I'm going to go 16 again. And then I'm going to add rows and I'm just going to add 16 rows so it's even. Get rid of the gutter. Click OK. I'm just zooming out and you can count 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a perfect line there. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. Perfect line there. This is perfectly in the middle. So sometimes it might not be perfectly in the middle, but you can do this using your selection tool, your move tool to move it around okay and what I should have done before I did that is that only moves one layer right so what we need to do if we want to move the entire image is go down to this little eye next to background on the layers panel click click that eye that makes the background disappear and it's you can see it's transparent here I'm going to right click on the layer and we want to merge visible so that all these bars right have now become one layer but you only want to do that once everything's been aligned okay and then we can center the image each bar has been aligned and then we can center the image yeah 
Then we want to recheck the background so we can see it. Go back up to our marquee tool, select, click the move button, and now we can move the entire image. I'm just going to put it exactly back where it was because it was just where I needed it to be. I'm going to click out of that and go back up to view, clear canvas guides, and that's it. Um, I'm not going to get you guys to do anything about the white space above and below. Um, I actually think it adds to the work a little bit because we've turned something that was this size, the exact same image, and we've elongated it. And it's, it's a little smaller now, but, but I think this does frame it. And what you guys can do now is go File, go down to Export, export as and you want to double check that all this information on the sidebar is the same as what we input at the start so image size should be 3000 pixels wide 3000 pixels high the scale should be at 100 um, again canvas size should be the exact same and all of this stuff we don't really need to worry about those or the color because it's black and white. But as long as those dimensions are correct and that scale is at 100% and the format is .png, you can go ahead and export. Okay, I'm not going to do that now because I've saved it about a thousand times <laughs> practicing. So that's how you export your image. Uh, once you've done that, you can submit it um, under the Friday. Uh, post on the canvas page there's a little link there to go to the submission page and that's all you need to do okay um, if you want to on the instructions page uh, instructions um, document sorry there's further uh, instructions on how to do more uh, really complicated stuff so if I close these close these, I don't need to save them, and do more complicated stuff like this, like the lotus, lotus, the flower image that um, Trace Loops did last, that we saw last week, you sort of use those same skills to replicate uh, and repeat and, and create this sort of really cool expanding um, effect again. So that's an extension task. Um, if you want to do it, you don't have to do it. It's only if you want to challenge yourself. Um, but I'm not, I'm not mandating it. <laughs> All you have to do is that, that first image. So have fun with it, play around with it. Um, do it, do what you can in extensions. Um, you don't have to, but like, if you really, really want to go for it. Um, uh, if you have any questions, you can email me or Miss Thompson and, uh, that wraps it up. All right.